When it comes to achieving mass appeal with watches, nobody does it better than Rolex and Omega. Yet amongst the expansive catalogs of both these brands, we have two watches that seem to be equally glossed over while seeming to provide the same tool function in an unconventional package. The watches, the Rolex Milgauss and the Omega Railmaster. And today, they go head to head. Let's jump into it. Now the two models that we have here today are modern interpretations of the Milgauss and the Railmaster line. The Rolex Milgauss 116400 GV with a blue-green sunburst dial or known as Z Blue and was first introduced back in 2014. And then the Omega Railmaster or technically referred to as the Seamaster Railmaster. However, I'll just refer to it as the Railmaster going forward. But this watch was in addition to the Seamaster family back in 2017 along with the Railmaster Limited Edition celebrating the 60 year anniversary of the line. So these two watches have essentially been rivals since the beginning, as the need for suitable watches to resist magnetism was needed back in the mid 20th century, as digital and coarse watches had not reached prominent production yet. So in 1954, Rolex introduced the Rolex Milgauss 6543, the first Milgauss reference that saw very limited production, only of a couple hundred pieces, and had a production run for just two years and then was replaced by the reference 6541 in 1956. These watches were made for scientists and engineers and now really is the bar for anti-magnetism in modern timepieces. At this time, Omega was in the process of developing their own professional series of watches, which would comprise the Omega Speedmaster, the Omega Speedmaster, and the Railmaster professional watches. The Railmaster was made with very similar intentions as the Milgauss, but with a focus on railway employees, scientists, electricians, and other professionals who worked with or in the vicinity of strong electrical currents. The Railmaster went in and out of production over the years, being discontinued in just 1963, it would not be introduced again until 2003 to then be dropped again from production in 2012 and then being reintroduced with this model in 2017. So now these watches at a glance. This Rolex Milgauss, case size of 40 millimeters, case thickness of 13.5 millimeters, lug to lug we're looking at 48 millimeters, width 20 millimeters, water resistance of 100 meters, powered by an automatic Rolex 3131 movement. This watch has a sapphire crystal with a green hue tint, uh, which I'll get a little bit more into detail later, and the price of $8,200. The Omega Railmaster, on the other hand, case size of 40 millimeters, case thickness of 12 millimeters, lug to lug, we're looking at 46.8 millimeters, lug width 20 millimeters, water resistance of 150 meters. Movement here, we're looking at a coaxial 8806 movement, crystal, sapphire as well, and the price of $5,000 retail. And before we get too far into this, I want to thank Bob's Watches for sending me these watches. They're a partner of the channel. If you use the link in the description to buy these watches as well as any other watch, that supports the content that we're watching. I mean, this Omega Railmaster here, I think they have it up for like $3,695. So pretty good deal there. Also, big shout out to Hitter Stitch. I'm actually wearing some of their clothes right now. Been a big fan of them for honestly many years now. They just made announcements of some additions to their spring catalog. So definitely check it out as well as a really cool new boot line that they have just launched. And if you use the link in the description, you can get a 20% discount off your first purchase with the brand, as well as getting an additional discount for being a viewer here if you put in the promo code that I have in the description down below. So big thank you to them as well. So looking at these watches, we have two very different dial designs, but essentially at their core, they're aiming to do the same thing with them being essentially tool watches at the core. Starting with the Rolex, again, we are greeted with an eye-catching Z blue dial, a dial color that was introduced back in 2014 and is only compounded with its eye-catching appearance with a green sapphire crystal that when glancing at it at certain angles, gives off this green hue halo around the outermost part of the dial. At the center of the dial, we have applied loom filled hour markers that protrude out from an orange numeral markings on the minute track that mark the every five. At the six, the two line call out of the movements chronometer certification. And at the 12, a Rolex crown with three line lettering with all caps saying Milgauss at the bottom line, coming in orange, matching that legendary orange lightning bolt second hand a hallmark to the line that was first introduced back with the reference 6541. Now jumping over to the Omega Railmaster, we are greeted with a very different style of watch. At first glance, I noticed the textured black finished dial that depending on the light gives a much different look. And I would say in most cases, it looks more charcoal or gray than it does true black. The textured finish is uniquely done and adds a bit more detail to the printed dial, bearing numerals at the 12, 3, 6, and 9. The other area of mention here on the dial is the use of faux patina, with triangular loom plots at the hour markings and within the hands of the watch. When it comes to loom of these watches, I think I would give the slight edge to Omega in terms of just 
uh, being able to light up in a dark room. Uh, but I will say, I don't know if it necessarily lends to it actually being easier to read, but I'd say it's probably about a wash here. The faux patina on the markings is matched well with the writing of Railmaster at the six o'clock, with crosshairs at the center of the dial, and the railway vibes are heightened with the railway style minute track around the outside of the dial. Now moving to the cases and bracelets, the Rolex comes in with an oyster style case and bracelet with a screw down crown. The Omega coming with a smaller all brush case and bracelet and a screw down crown with wider rivets than that of the Milgauss. Despite the watches sharing the same case size of 40 millimeters, the Rolex has a much more substantial presence on the wrist given its heightened lug to lug height of 48 millimeters as well as the superior oyster bracelet. Although the dial finish and applied indices on the dial of the Rolex is also superior in my opinion, I think the bracelet is where the vast difference in price is most felt. As the bracelet is a bit underwhelming on the Omega, especially at the clasp when compared to that of the Rolex. As the Rolex also comes with an oyster clasp with coming with five millimeters of comfort extension when needed. That considered the oyster bracelet is one of the best bracelets of all time. So this is a matchup that's tough for Omega to really stand a chance against. Flipping over the watches, we have a standard cap back on the Milgauss. Nothing crazy, but nothing else to be expected with Rolex. On the Omega, we have a solid case back that is nicely finished, but I can't help but to feel that an open case back would have been a better choice here given the movement, which is a perfect segue to our movements, as the Omega contains an Omega coaxial 8806, featuring a power reserve of 55 hours, as well as featuring a coaxial escapement invention of the great George Daniels, utilizing a free-sprung balance wheel and a silicon balance spring. This all lends to it becoming a master chronometer certified movement, which allows this movement to handle 15,000 Gauss of magnetism, a feat that is more impressive considering the Rolex Milgauss certified for 1,000 Gauss. Granted, I'm not an engineer and I can't speak to how these movements will actually test in strenuous environments. However, both will be more than capable in this area, but on paper, impressive for Omega here. The Rolex movement is a Rolex 3131, a cost certified movement testing in at plus or minus two seconds a day, essentially the same four seconds of deviance a day as the Omega. The movement has a 48 hour power reserve and features a paramagnetic blue parachrom hairspring. So with this all considered, who comes out on top? Well, first the two watches are very similar in their goals of construction. Yet the Omega coming in at just 60% of the price of the Rolex, even more when looking at second hand, that is gonna be the number one factor here. In terms of finishing and build quality of both of the cases and bracelets, the Milgauss wins in this category, no question, and it's seriously not very close. However, in terms of movement, water resistance, and its impressive resistance against magnetism and wearing versatility given its more subdued color profile, I think the Omega wins in this category. Another important note here is the Rolex, of course, is always going to demand more on the secondary market and keep its value a little bit more, but it's not like you're going to get completely burned with buying this Omega, uh, especially if you get it on second hand. So with this all considered, I think if I had to choose better value for money here, I think I would go with the Omega watch. Just based on its versatility, I think it has a better movement and it has some heightened specs in terms of its magnetism. I don't know how that will come in actual functional daily use, uh, but a nice feat there. And then also the upped water resistance. All of that I think lends to it being a better package, especially being nearly half the price. But I think for the Rolex Milgauss, it does have its own unique charm as well. So it's just more of a personal preference thing for me and kind of where I fall. But I really don't think you can go wrong with either of these pieces. As both of these watches in a way have gotten like the neglected middle child type of treatment uh, when you look at the two brands. But if you decide to get either, know you're getting something that won't be the first choice of many. And ultimately, I think that is a big reason why these watches are so special. So guys, which one of these watches would you choose for yourself? I'd love to see comments down below. Always been good discussion when I posted these on Instagram as well as in the Facebook group. So I'm expecting nothing different here. Also, if you wanna see more of these side-by-side -side comparisons, do you like this video, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon as well. Also, be sure to go over to Bob's Watches. If you wanna buy any of these watches as well as any other watch, buying using the link in the description, big help for us. Also, by going over to our website, buying a watch strap, we have tons of watch straps now available, adding more and more as the time goes on, and that's probably the best way to support us, honestly. Uh, so that's a, also a huge help in allowing us to continue what we're doing. And then finally, if you want to join our watch giveaway, fill out our watch giveaway form and then follow me on Instagram. So guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.